Hi everybody, so I thought it was about time we got on with some teardowns and uh, stopped looking at Quantel paint boxes all of the time. Now unfortunately this is Quantel related, I know, I know. This uh, might be a little bit interesting on the inside. This is a set of uh, fader controls for a Quantel edit box. So this would have been used to uh, adjust audio levels. I believe you could also um, do fades and things, um, transitions with it as well. Now the interesting thing about this is it was part of the edit box and that was a very, very expensive system. So it's probably going to be built extremely well on the inside. And the other important factor is these are flying faders. Now flying faders mean that um, in addition to um, a human being able to come along here and adjust these um, in real time as you're uh, making an edit, you can actually also see these move about as you're replaying uh, what you've done. So uh, these will be moving up and down and doing whatever they do. So inside it'll be interesting to see how they've done the uh, motorized action on the faders. Now also in addition to the faders we also have a number of buttons up at the top. These are a see-through plastic so I would imagine there's probably going to be LEDs and lights underneath there. And we also have these um, adjustment knobs along the top. Now these um, spin around continuously so they're obviously going to be optical encoders of some description. If we have a little look around this, it does weigh a huge amount. I mean, it must be getting on for six or seven kilos. On the bottom, nothing really to see. Uh, some Quantel logos, and then we've just got a simple RJ45 port on the back. I very much doubt that is using anything to do with Ethernet. Um, I would imagine knowing a little bit about Quantel, it's probably some kind of serial protocol, RS232 or um, RS422. Okay, let's just have this apart. There are just seem to be four PosiDrive screw, screws on the base. And they're machine screws as well, so they're obviously going into threaded inserts or something. Yeah, nothing to see here. Uh, the case is all plastics, pretty thick. Getting on for what five six millimeters thick plastic there, and it's dated 27th of November 2000. So uh, yeah, that is just a plastic cover. So we just need to take off this metal base, and then we should be able to see something. Now it looks like we've got uh, two slotted screws there for some reason. Not quite sure why. You'd have a mixture of posi drive and slotted, but there we go. I guess it is British made, so it's got to be at least a bit weird somewhere. Right, this all looks quite interesting. Uh, we have the faders down here. Quite clearly, we've got uh, motors on the end of each of these faders and Quite clear to see in there, there is a small belt drive which drives the fader up and down its, its travel. Um, these faders are made by Penny and Giles Controls Limited. Uh, type PGFM3200. And they are individually serial numbered as well. So obviously they would not have been cheap. Those then plug into this PCB that's mounted onto the, onto the base. Uh, we have a number of, uh, presumably these are drivers and feedback. Not quite sure which is the actual uh, part number. We've got A3952SEB and we also have M034326APA. I suspect it's probably the the latter one. We also have what looks to be a programmable device there that has a Quantel part number on it. We've got an Altera Flex FPGA I think, EPF 10K. We've got a crystal oscillator just up there which is running at 50 megahertz and we've got two Lambda power supply modules and they are there will be DC DC converters and they are in, have an input of 18 to 36 volts and an output of 5 volts. 
Um, there's two of those, so I wonder if they've uh, been set up in a plus and minus 5 volt configuration. Um, also on here of note, there's a couple of um, PCB mount fuses, some old style capacitors there. Right, let's just have a little bit of a closer look at these components that we look, saw earlier. Um, so we have here a Maxim Max 194B, and that is a 14-bit 85 kilosamples per second ADC. So that's obviously providing the um, digitization of the output from the uh, sliders. And these are a motor driver, so it's all pretty obvious stuff that um, that will be driving the motor to provide the, the motorized action and that will be doing the sampling. And I guess everything's been taken care of by the um, FPGA. Okay, let's take off this top board, disconnect all these. And we have a little bit more on the other side. We've got another Altera Flex EPF 10K and another uh, Lambda DC DC converter. That one is an output of 12 volts. So uh, probably the 12 volt is to drive the uh, drive the motors at a guess. Um, we've just got some very basic passives on this side, surface mount caps and some resistors, and that's pretty much it. And on this second board we have um, loads and loads of uh, passives and possibly transistors on there, not entirely sure. Uh, we've got another Altera Flex, uh, EPF 10K again, and a, another programmable device. Uh, I'll take a note and have a look at those again in a minute just to see the exact part number. This looks like it's attached to the base through these rather large um, screws on here, so we'll just whip those off and see if um, everything will come out as a single unit. Okay, so we've got a really nicely made um, set of buttons there um, with a Quantel part number. That looks like it's a, a piece of machined plastic, Delrin or something like that. Uh, we have the um, optical encoders um, along the top there. We've got these buttons and it looks like these are also LEDs. These are lights as well. So let's go ahead and remove the circuit board. And that is a very, very good fit in there. There we go. So we've got some really nicely uh, made buttons there um, with LED in the actual switch itself. And we also have a, um, oh, we've got multicolor LEDs in here. I don't know whether you can just hopefully it'll focus. Just seeing there the number of pins we have on the LEDs, six pins. So it's going to be lots of different colours available. Uh, one thing I have noticed on this board is most of the devices are dated um, 0034, so that's 34th week 2000. Um, those ones here are 0020, 0039. Um, but these three here... Um, are dated 1995, uh, 9531, so they have an odd range of dates um, that you've got like nearly 
five years between that one being manufactured and that one. So whether they're just roll, running out old stock when, uh, when they made this board, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, let's just take out one of these flying faders. Just held in with two posi drive screws. Oh, obviously I'm gonna have to take the knob off first. And there's the actual um, slider itself with a very, very small toothed belt drive on it. It's not very tight, it's quite slack, but there are re little retention ridges on the, the gears there to stop the belt coming off anyway. Very, very nice smooth action. Uh, and you'll also note that um, where the dust and uh, crap might fall through the faders, uh, there is actually a sloped surround so none of the dirt actually falls inside the actual um, place where the uh, potentiometer is. So uh, obviously to keep dirt and crap out. The body of this appears to be extruded aluminium, uh, which is then anodized uh, in black, and then it's obviously just cut to length and these end pieces put on, which are plastic. So the main body is aluminium, and then the end pieces are plastic. Certainly looks like it was a very, very expensive um, part, that one. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you've got any comments, leave them in the comments section. Thumbs up are always appreciated. And of course, if you do want to donate to my Patreon feed, then you can do. The link is in the description as always. Um, again, I've said before, my videos will always be free to watch. Um, you are just um, able to contribute towards the channel if you feel the need to. Uh, there's also links to my Facebook account and my blog site in the description as well, so check them out. Thanks for watching everybody, see you on the next one.